Alrighty, we've got a very special four on four today because you know what? Guess who I'm passing to? I'm passing to Hounf. That is Paul Chion, and he is back on the drafting streets. So, for his first draft here in the server, we did random teams, and uh, we're not on the same team, and I'm passing to him, which is perfect because I'm going to first pick a mana drain and pass him a pack full of nothing. The second best card here is probably Ancient Tomb. Maybe. Maybe you take one of the white cards if you opened on a white card, but even then I'd still probably just take Ancient Tomb. So this is kind of the perfect team draft pack, and Paul is not going to be happy with this. It is myself, Troll Ascetic, Falcon Eye, and Talisker. Oh, fantastic team. Battle against Hounf, Mac, Updraft Elemental, and Timrod. So we've got a solid squad here, and I'm very happily first picking Mana Drain. Second pick... All right, it's a little bit, a little bit more. We're not giving just scraps to Hump. We've got a, a frantic search, a dismember, and a birds of paradise. Are the cards I would consider picking here. Exhum, I think, is not quite strong enough. I would rather. I mean, if that if that was an anime dead, I would just take it. But Exhum, I think, is a little bit too narrow. Like it's a good card in Reanimator, but if you're not in Reanimator, it's not good. Whereas anime dead's good in any black deck. I'm kind of in just dismember over frantic search. I think Dismember is awesome, and it's colorless. Frantic Search is blue, but it's not... Cube isn't just what colors are you, it's also what decks you're drafting. And there's definitely decks where Frantic Search ends up being awesome. But I, I'm happy enough just taking Dismember and probably just taking Underground C here. I have a blue card and not, re not really a black card, but... Bloodstained Mire, I'd have to do work to get it to make blue mana. Underground Sea just already makes blue and black mana, which I think is going to be better even this early on. It's close. Next up, we, there's also Chrome Mox, Rafine's Tower. Yeah, I don't think any of these other cards are as good. I think I'm just going to take Underground Sea here. Ooh. Doomsday and Yogwell here. I could take one and try to wheel the other. Or I could just take like a Generous Ent. I don't think Gonti or Starving Revenant are quite good enough in this spot. I mean, this is also just kind of a bad pack. Maybe I take Doomsday and just kind of see how that works out. Because I have the Underground Sea, I have Mana Drain. If I pick up like Athasa's Oracle, Doomsday can be pretty good. Yeah, it seems fine. I, I just don't think any of those other cards there are something I'm really that interested in. Oh, Dark Confident I am, though. I like Dark Confident more than Thieving Skydiver. I think Dark Confident's awesome. And that last pack aside, I mean, maybe I don't play this Doomsday, whatever. I think that this is a really good setup for, like, a blue-black tempo deck or blue-black control deck. Just some sort of mid rangey ish blue-black deck, though, of course, Doomsday means maybe I'll go into a combo element. This pack, oh, has a Verdant. Feeling really good about this Underground Sea decision now that I'm going to pick up Verdant over like Grave Titan, Odawara, Sir Ginger. Yeah, nothing, nothing remotely close. All right, well, this pack has a decision to make. It's basically do I want to take Life, Death, and keep the Reanimator options open or Shielded Edict, which is a fantastic removal spell. I think given where I'm at right now, I'm just going to take Shielded Edict. Oh, now I'll take Brainstorm. Brainstorm looks great here. It's, it's great with Bob. It's great with fetch lands. It's actually good with Doomsday too. And I think this is a pretty sweet little start. Looking mostly like blue black control, but we've got this Doomsday. It's possible that I'd play that as like a little Doomsday package. Here there's a Dark Slick Shores and Sauron's Ransom. Um, I think I'll just take Dark Slick Shores. I'm not quite sold on Sauron's Ransom yet. It is close, but I'm happy to do that. Now I'll take Badlands. This deck could easily be Grixis and I think Splashing... Oops, splashing red off of Verdant and Badlands could work out pretty well. Well, this is the first pack where I wish I had taken Generous Ent over Doomsday, because I'm going to take Sylvan. I think it's the best card here, and not really likely to play it. Same here, I guess. I'll just hate Kiki Jiki, because I think the other cards there are not particularly relevant. Oh. Dig through time. Not bad. Maybe I might play this one. It's not the best combo with Bob, but it's a good card for this kind of deck. I gotta get Urza Lord Protector out of here. I, my cube... I basically made this cube, and after cubing with it ten times or whatever, I have a ton of updates I want to make. I just haven't gone around to do them. Well, a ton is overstating it, but I have a decent amount of updates. Like, for example, cutting Urza Lord Protector. That one's gotta get out of here. 
I want to talk a little more about one of the picks, I think, which was pretty important. Shieldred's Edict versus Life Death. Part of the reason I took Shieldred's Edict is... Ooh, Ode Free Odawara. Nice. I have no uh, reanimate cards. And Dark Confidant's one of my better cards that is actually pretty bad in reanimator because you end up putting, like, three to five creatures that are huge in your deck. So it feels like Shieldred's Edict, which is a perfect card for a control deck... Plus Bob, when I when I have Mana Drain, Dismember, Brainstorm is a little better. So we'll see we'll see where we end up. Obviously, if I first pick in Tomb here, I'll wish I had just taken Life Death. But I think given where we are, it made a lot of sense. Uh, all right, so <laughs> there's some face flip cards here. A little Jace, Concealing Curtains, Reckless Storm Seeker. Mm. This pack's just looking like a polluted Delta to me. Not an exciting first pick, honestly, but. Uh, I don't know, it's that or Jace Friend's Prodigy. Jace is really good. Maybe I take Jace, and let's see, what's going to go? Brain Freeze, Delta, Balance, Othari, Currency Converter, Skull Clamp is six. And then maybe some combination of, like, Thought Scour, Concealing Curtains, Mind Stone. Yeah, I mean, I'm not getting Delta back, but Jace does look, does look actually really good here. So let's just take the Jace. Also, if this Thought Scour wheels, which I think it's got a pretty good chance to, that opens the door for Doomsday again. And one of the things that I'm actually liking about this Doomsday pick is, despite the fact that I didn't take Delta here, having three blue black lands really helps because part of the issue with Doomsday, of course, is the mana cost. <sighs> then, of course, disaster struck because there's an Entomb here. Oh. There's also Undermount Adventure, and I have a Verdant. I might just take Adventure, and here, there's a couple reasons why. One... I don't think Mac's playing Reanimator. Mac passed me a pretty late life death, and that makes it a lot less likely he's in a position to take into him. I think there's a decent chance he's playing green, and the neck and Undermount Adventure is the next best card. I just don't think I'm in an Entomb seat here. We're looking, and now I'll take Snuff Out, which works really well when you're trying to fight over uh, Initiative. It's good with Jace. I think it's just a good card. Over Unearth and Preacher of the Schism. Overgrown Tomb. All, all those are cards I would be interested in as well. Yeah, the Doomsday is looking a lot worse than uh, Generous Ent right now. But, you know, I, I decided to keep keep my combo options open. All right, here... Oh, here's Thassa's Oracle. There's also Fury. Damn, I hate seeing that. Uh, and a Feywild Caretaker. And a Force of Negation. So Thassa's Oracle is the combo with Doomsday, where you cast Doomsday, and then you cast, like, if I wheel Thought Scour... And then you cast Thassa's Oracle and you win. But I think Thassa's Oracle will wheel here. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. But I, I can't be forth picking Thassa's Oracles over Force Negation or Feywild Caretaker. And I think given this deck, I just picked up Undermountain. I kind of like Force of Negation here. Force of Negation, I think, is, is awesome. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I, I would be surprised if Thassa's Oracle didn't wheel. Oh, I will take a Ponder. That is a perfect little pickup. I like Ponder, especially with a fetch land and with Bob, more than Knight's Whisper or Virtue. And then this pack, this pack is just a miss for me. I mean, I could take World Spine Worm in case I get Flash. Also, not taking Entomb has worked out pretty well so far. I haven't seen any good reanimate cards to go with it. Um, I could also take Celestial Colonnade because it's just a good card. I don't really have much in the way of white cards or fixing. <laughs> I could take Puzzle Box in case I pick up Hole Breacher. I don't really care about hating like any of these cards. I might just take Colonnade. I think Colonnade is is awesome. Maybe I'll end up playing it. Oh, Memory Lapse. Yeah, I'm not passing up that. Um, there's also Baleful Strix, Arcane Denial. Wow, this is a pretty strong pack, but I'm going to take Memory Lapse. I think Memory Lapse is incredible. This is looking like such a good Dark Confidant deck. Turn 2 Dark Confidant, Force Negation your play, Memory Lapse your play, Snuff Out your play, Manage in your play, like just on and on. Seems pretty good to me. Oh, baby, and there's a Snapcaster. A Snapcaster with three one-mana spells and three two-mana spells plus some more. Excellent. Uh, pass up on a High Tide and a Reckoner Bank Buster. I'm fine with all that. Oh, yeah, this deck's looking like a monster. So... I guess taking out the Badlands and the Colonnade, I could use green fixing because I want to play this Undermountain. And honestly, if my fixing gets good enough, I'll play Sylvan too. I'll just be a Sultite control. 
Could use more blue-black fixing. I still think that Jace over Polluted Delta made sense, but yeah, it was a little painful not taking Polluted Delta. All right, Thought Scour came back, and I think I want Thought Scour because Thought Scour with Doomsday is a pretty nice combo. Basically, you Doomsday, and then maybe you have to pass the turn, and then you cast Thought Scour, and, and uh, the Thassa's Oracle wins the game. Also, Thought Scour is just a decent cantrip with some of those creatures, so I think it's better than Concealing Curtains, though it is close. Plus, blue cantrips are good in a Force of Negation deck. Oh, Breeding Pool came back? Very happy about that. That's perfect. So I'll pass up on Tarmogoyf and K-Command. Tarmogoyf's actually a card I would play in this deck, but I think first I'd rather get the fixing so that uh, now I have two green sources for free, and I guess I'll take Botanical Sanctum here over... I don't think Hex Mage, Bitter Reunion, Ramanop makes sense. I think this is the Thassa's Oracle pack. And if Thassa's Oracle doesn't wheel, we're just not going to play Doomsday. And that, that's fine, too. I don't think this deck is actually, like, lacking win conditions. I just think I would probably play Doomsday. Oh, Oracle didn't come back. Okay. Well, there goes that. I don't think I want Regrowth or Cabal Ritual. I think Uro could actually make the cut if I get more green fixing. So let's just take that. Knight's Whisper came back? Sure, I'll take that. And I really don't think I'm going to play either of these. Yeah, I guess I'm a little more likely to play Grazer, but oh, last pick Baleful Strix. Oh, that's a gift. And we opened Lotus Time Walk. No, I have to pass one of these to Paul? Unbelievable. And I just passed Regrowth. It's okay. I have Jace and Snapcaster. Time Walk's going to be plenty good. Can't believe I'm passing a Lotus to Paul. This is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll take time walk. Welcome to the gift, Paul. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I don't think anything super relevant is going to wheel. All right, all right. Well, at least I get a remand out of it, which I think is still probably better than grief because I have no way to bring it back. Maybe I wheel this by you, too. That would be pretty nice. All right. I mean, this is just an awesome blue-black control deck, and now I get a preordain, too. I think that uh, I think that my deck is incredibly good. So, just hooked up Chion with a Lotus, though. Really, the only thing I'm missing is a little bit more on the mana fixing side. But I'm not even doing badly there. I have three blue black lands. Well, two blue black lands, a tri land, and two blue green lands, which with uh, I think the expectation to get maybe one or two more over the course of this pack. That that is not bad at all. And I have so many cantrips. Oh, and there's Leovold. Yeah, this is looking like the perfect Leovold deck. I don't have any, like, draw sevens, but Leovold's just such a strong card if you can cast it. Pass up on a bunch of stuff that's not as appealing. And I feel did a pretty good job of dodging the reanimate bullet. We'll, we'll see how that turns out. But I kind of don't think Max playing reanimator. And I certainly feel pack two would not have gone very well for me if I was trying to play it. Though I guess here I would maybe get... Triplicate Titan or Corpse Dance? I don't know. Right now we're at 18 lands and the rest spells. I have all cheap spells with one dig through time, which I think I can I can fade with Bob, especially with a couple ways to fix the top of my deck. Though I guess this Thought Scour is no longer looking that good. But any deck that has Mana Drain, Memory Lapse, Remand, Force of Negation, like that's a lot of great counter spells. Especially with like Snuff Out and Dismember so I can kill creatures. Like... I feel pretty good about this situation here. See, here it's a little awkward because Vampiric Tutor. Eh, no, I picked up a Time Walk. Never mind, Vamp's great here. I, I was gonna say I don't usually like Vamp in this kind of deck, but I think in I think in this deck specifically it'll be good. All right, that was pick five. Can I just get some more lands? I don't need anything else. I've got enough counter spells. I've got enough removal. I even have enough win conditions. I think Undermount Adventure and Uro are pretty substantial. It would have been nice to have the Doomsday Oracle win condition, but I think it's fine that we didn't end up getting there. Ooh. You know, this is tough. This is a good pack, too. Six pick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There'll be two cards left. I mean, the two cards left are going to be playable because this pack is good, but that's because I tried to build a cube with all like playable cards. Though there's still some misses in here. Uh, I am going to take Library of Alexandria. I do love Creeping Tar Pit, and it's good with the initiative, but Library in a deck with a free counter, a free removal spell, a one-drop removal spell, and a bunch of two-mana counters, like this is the perfect Library deck. Oh, and the perfect Shelldock deck. Yeah, easy Shelldock over City of Traders there. 
And then there's a wooded foothills. Okay, so that's a blue green land. And I have a bad land, so it's also a red land, or a black land rather. Okay. Passing Sword of the Meek Thopter Foundry. Let's hope Hamph wasn't going for that. But I'm not passing up a land here. Yeah, nothing came back. I'm going to take Trinket Mage because Paul has a Lotus. I don't really need to do that. And I don't really want to play Herborg, so that's fine. I don't think I want Displacer Kitten, nor do I care about passing it. So I'll take a Wooded Foothills. So now, or a Ketria Triumph. So now Wooded Foothills, well, I guess I could already get that. But this is just another blue-green tap land. I think it's fine. And I have a Kiki. I could take Conscripts. Uh, I don't think any of these cards are all that likely to be played. I guess I'll just take the Touch the Spirit Realm, leave the three red cards. And here, I guess I'll take Memory Jar over Corpse Dance. I don't feel like Paul's going to use Corpse Dance. I don't think Outland Liberator is something I'll miss too much. I already have to cut a card because I want to play 18 lands here. So I ended up getting a late Triumph. Because, I mean... Wooded Foothills gets black, blue, and green mana. That's that's awesome with this Badlands to help. My my mana base looks a lot wilder than it actually is. But I think I can run Sylvan. I think I, I think it's worth running Uro. I'm going to have probably... Let's see. If I play these plus a forest, maybe. I'll have six green sources. And we're talking super late game to draw two of them. All right. I'll now... I guess I will take a Rex Age as a sideboard card and pass a super late Bolas as Citadel. And then Tamio came back. Yeah, I will run Tamiyo. I don't want Lotus Field. Oh, that was a nice wheel on Tamiyo to go with my time walk. All right, well, we got we got a great deck here. Let's see how this pans out. All right, so we're only a couple cards over here, which is kind of nice. Drafted a lot of lands. I think the biggest questions are... Let's take a look at these lands. Is there anything here? I mean, this member's actually a one-drop. Uh, is there anything here that... Stands out. I mean, no, because they're all the cards are great. Actually, Thought Scour kind of stands out. Thought Scour, I think, is probably worse now that I don't have. Uh... Yeah, it's like the fourth cantrip, and it's it is fine. It has a combo with Dig. It kind of combos with like Tamia by putting more cards in your graveyard. I think I, I don't need all that many cantrips. Let's see. Let's so Verdant's a tri land. What is a tri land? And these are duels. Badlands is actually not a dual land because I don't have any red cards. It just makes the Wooded Foothills work. So in terms of green, one, two, three, four, five green sources. And I, I think it's actually fine to have an unta an, a grant green land. Because if I get... On the one hand, if I have Undermount Adventure, I probably don't need to go get a basic forest that often with the first part of Initiative. But part of the reason I want to include that is I might want a second green for Uro. Cause, and just a six green source isn't that bad uh, in this deck. Okay, and then blue, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 10, 11, 12 blue. Man, my lands are actually pretty good. Though that might be too many blue because I don't have as much black fixing. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so I can probably go to 11 blue so I can get my eighth black source in. Because this is three four, five, six, seven, eight. But I kind of want to play 18 lands because I have Odawara, Sheldock, and Library all as, and I even could even cycle Ketria Triumph. And that kind of makes me want another black because right now I still have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 blue sources. I don't really need the 12th blue source. And I think having another black so I can cast turn two Shieldred's Edict or Knight's Whisper Dark Confidant's pretty good. Baleful Strix too. All right, well, yeah, this deck looks great. Let's see what, uh, oh, I need to cut one. I'm at 18 lands and too many cards now. Maybe I don't cut one. Maybe I, maybe I don't actually play the Swamp because I have three cantrips. Yeah, that's probably pretty good. And a lot of ways to recycle Time Walk, a pretty low curve for Bob. Yeah, th this deck is great. All right, let's see what my teammates are up to here. We got Troll Ascetic on a Lurus Companion deck with... Bankbuster, Copter, Curse Scroll, Mishra's Bobble, Lotus Petal. Kind of bad mana base, only one black white land. He was kind of tilted about that. Animate Dead is, and Selfless Spirit are both great with Luris. Scholar of New Horizons, Swords to Plowshares, Path, Balance. Yeah, I love this deck. Him to Tarak and Sinkhole. Falcon Eye here is on a red white deck, splashing green for just Ren and Six because he's got Strip Mine. 
alongside uh, some good red, green, and white Fixic, and Crucible, Chrome Mox, Flame Tongue, Othari, Fourth Eorlingus, Parallax Wave, Solitude. Yeah, a lot of the hits. Chain Lightning, Stone Forge for Cauldra Complete, looking great. And then, uh, as usual, there's Talisker. Talisker marches to the beat of his own drum. The uh, Hero Bladehold Flash deck. Now, this deck has Flash for Triplicate Titan, Upheaval, Time Spiral, uh, with Hole Breacher, Mana Vault, and Mox, but then also Hero Bladehold, Seasoned Engineer, Wandering Emperor, Fracture Identity, Teferi. So it's kind of like blue-white mid. We'll see how this one does. This one okay. looks okay. I like the other teammates' decks a lot, though. I am going to play first against Mac. Any libraries? No. Wow, this hand actually looks really bad. I think I'm just going to mulligan this hand. This hand just doesn't do anything. This hand's a lot stronger. Um, I'm going to keep this, and I think I'm going to... Uh, what do I put back? I kind of want to put back a land. I think I'm just going to put back an island. I've got remand, so I feel like turn one, breeding pool, turn two, wooded foothills for badlands, remand your spell can get me there. I know Mox is, or Mox, Mac is uh, a blue deck with Time Twister and uh, Wheel of Fortune, so yeah, let's just play Swamp here and um, pass the turn. Yeah, I feel pretty good putting the land back, though Wooded Foothills, because the Breeding Pool is already in play, can't get untapped blue, which is a little bit annoying here, but... If I play the Wooded Foothills here, then I'm forced to crack it if I'm remanding, which I am remanding. All right, remand you. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. Can I draw a land? No. Um, I think what I have to do here, well, let's let's crack the Foothills. I think it is correct that I have to get, yeah, Ketria Trium tapped. So, so I just have to cast Time Walk here and hope to draw a land. Land for Undermount Adventure. Oh yeah. That is perfect. And then I've got double black. I've got double green. I guess I'll just get another blue. Pass the turn. And now that deck fade and play is looking a lot less good. And then next turn, if Mac doesn't have something good this turn, I get to attack with Undermount Adventure, cast Tamio, recast Time Walk with the initiative out. So basically what Mac needs to do is play a creature this turn. A non-creature. I don't even think... Dak Faden does anything, so I'm going to allow it. I could have Force of Negation that, but what, what's Dak Faden doing? I think I don't think Max is going to get a whole lot out of that. Discard Embrace, Shieldbreaker, and Burst Lightning. Okay, let's go into the Forge. Get two counters on that. Play my land. Um, do I attack Dak or do I attack Mac? If I attack Mac, it goes to 15, and then I assume I take another turn. Trap goes to 10, Undermount attacks you down to 5. No, this still seems like attacking Dac is going gonna, is gonna to be better here. And then let's go tap those Tamio. Minus 3, get back Time Walk. <laughs> oh, you love to see it. Time Walk. Don't have enough for Sylvan, but now I have double counter spell up. Uh, let's just trap you, Nug. And what am I even hoping to draw off of Tamio here? Um, given this hand, probably like memory lapse. Let's just take that. I missed. I didn't. I hit a bunch of cantrips. All right. Well, let's attack for five, and. Let's just play Sylvan here. I think it's fine to play Sylvan because I have Dismember up in case of a haster and I still have Mana Drain and Force of Negation up. So we'll be wrapping this one up in a nice little bow. I just needed to draw the land on turn four for Undermount Adventure. And then I did. And it worked out quite nicely. Mac did not take the Entomb, by the way. So I feel pretty good about passing that Entomb here. Next turn, Tamio's going to get to Time Walk again. Tamio's so ridiculous with Time Walk. And getting it back basically for free was so good. So yeah, I didn't wield the the Thassa's Oracle. It ended up in Talisker's sideboard, but got the you know. So the the Doomsday Path didn't work out, but I wasted one pick on that. Maybe I guess I wouldn't have taken Thought Scour. Maybe would have taken Mindstone, but that doesn't really matter too much for me. And but then in exchange, I got the free Tamio. Mm. 
So the question here is, do I cast Force of Negation or Mana Drain? I guess if it's a creature, I can't even force. They know about Force of Negation, then they don't know about Mana Drain. It's kind of a decent tiebreaker. And it's harder to play around Force of Negation in general, because I could always have it. Whereas Mana Drain, you can play around it. If I leave Blue Blue up, Mac might not run out a five drop, you know, next game or whatever. So, uh, oh yeah, that's Force of Negation, the Frantic Search. I think that that is good, because we just have Lethal here with Timio. Boom. All right, easy game. And let's see. Thought Scour, Rex Sage. Rex Sage, Rex Sage. Oh, I saw Mox at a Sensei's top. Yeah, that makes me feel like Rex Sage is going to be pretty good. Mm. What do I want to cut? I don't really want to cut Snuff Out or Dismember yet. Seems like I shouldn't do that. Uh, I guess it's possible I could cut Dig Through Time. I've got a bunch of ways to draw cards. I think that should be okay. I'm just kind of looking at Mac having like draw sevens. Dig Through Time's not great in a world where Time Twisters are getting cast generally. Uh, yeah, I mean, I gotta keep this hand. This hand is on the draw without an uh, interactive spell on turns one or two, but I have a brainstorm that can help look for that. Okay, that's not the scariest of starts. Oh, Jace. Um, I think I'm gonna brainstorm fetch here. My hand is just kind of slow, so I don't really mind, like maybe brainstorming and shuffling away Night's Whisper or something. I don't know. Brainstorm. Or I could put Rexage back. I still kind of like Rex Sage. I think Forest is the card I want least here, because I'm going to get to shuffle with the Verdant. And I guess, do I want a Swamp or a Forest? I guess I want Swamp here. And let's cast JVP. Maybe I get Burst Lightning or something. But not too concerned about that. Yeah, Unholy Heated. Next turn, I'm going to play Leovold or Rex Sage. And then the turn after that, play some Cantrips. We'll see. Mac has no plays. All right. I'm just going to cast Leovold here. Blue, black, green. And see if that sticks. Oh, Leovold did. Leovold is pretty tough for a red-blue deck. Even if they have, like, a lightning bolt, I still get to draw a card out of the deal. It turns off all their card draw. What is this? Oh, you're own Leovold, but I have a Reclamation Sage, and Leovold unfortunately doesn't stop <laughs> Mac from drawing an extra card here. But it's still pretty good. Okay, they, Mac does get to draw a card because Leo only stops one card each turn. But I do get to blow up Leovold and then shuffle this. I think Force of Negation and Time Walk are the kind of cards I'm looking for. Mana Drain, Uro and Two Lands didn't really seem too hot to me. Okay. No plays. Uh attack. I've got Remand up if I need it. All right, Dark Confidant. Sanctum, go. I think I can just keep up Remand now. Next turn, I can Night's Whisper. Mac might play a Fury or something. I think he does have Fury, but we'll see. We'll see. This is looking, this is looking pretty good. No plays. Interesting. All right. If I flip a Counterspell, it's just over. I flipped a Mana Drain. Uh, yeah. Let's cast Knight's Whisper here, leaving up Drain and Remand. Oh, and I have Odawara and Dismember as well. All right, well, good luck. <laughs> this is gonna be this is gonna be a tough one, especially since Max Mac hasn't made any plays in like five turns. I, his hand must have a bunch of card draw spells, or something. Yeah, you're not beating Mana Drain, and you're not beating Remand or Dismember or Odawara. So Prismari Command. Uh, target player draws two cards and discards two cards. Target. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to look at more cards. Sure. Uh, that's fine with me. <laughs> and what are we doing with all this mana? Third Path Iconoclast. Um, I actually think that that's one of the cards that would be kind of annoying to deal with. 
<clears throat> Ruby, okay. What's the big finish now that you've gotten the counter out of my hand? Underworld Breach. Oh, I will memory lapse that, I guess. And to see if that's good enough. You need something pretty good to, to get by here. The problem with letting Brain Freeze... Oh, am I going to lose to Brain Freeze? Oh, I am. He did have enough. I guess I shouldn't have drawn off the other one. I have exactly enough to to get memory lapsed it down to zero and then die from Dark Confidant. Wow, good beats. I didn't think that was going to happen, but I didn't really calculate Brain Freeze. All right, Breach plus Freeze, huh? Um, That doesn't make me want Thought Scour, I don't think. It doesn't really make me want Dig either. Yeah, I think I like where we're at, and we'll just try not to get Brain Freezed out. I guess I, I guess drawing off the Prismari command was was the issue there. Uh, oh, I will keep this hand. I think because Verdant is often tapped, it kind of feels like it's worth just using Verdant to get Ketria Triome here. I lose a Brainstorm Shuffle, but I don't think that's the biggest deal. All right, let's get Ketria Triome. And I'm just going to play Dark Confront and hope he doesn't have a burn spell here. He does not. Whew. At least not end of turn. All right. Talisman? All right, I'm going to break that. That's nice. All right, I hit Brainstorm. Yeah, that's fine. Let's just play a Rex Sage, hit with Dark Confidant. And now I don't think I even need to Brainstorm in response to Bob here, assuming Bob lives through another turn. Frantic Search. Oh, that's early for a Frantic Search. I'm feeling a little nervous about that. Discarded two lands, okay. Maybe he's just looking for a burn spell to kill Bob. Yeah, we found it. All right, well, I got my value from it, so I'm not super worried. Let's cast Baleful Strix. We'll again hold on to the Brainstorm here, or the, the Memory Lapse here. Oh, I'm going to play Sylvan, though. Sylvan, it's too early in the game to not tap out for Sylvan, I don't think. Oh, we found two burn spells. All right, fair enough. Well... As long as Mac doesn't have a big play this turn, I feel pretty good. Dax, steal my Baleful Strix, huh? No, he didn't. He's just using the plus. Okay. Uh, what am I hoping to draw? I guess, well, as always, Time Walk. Discard Embreath, Shieldbreaker, and Gut. Huh. All right, I use this. Um, I'm just going to pay a bunch of life. And then cast Knight's Whisper here. Play a land preordain actually uh, tack deck and I think do I preordain brainstorm or do nothing I kind of think I kind of think just preordaining here is fine all right bottom and then force negation on top all right force negation is great now I'm gonna try to hold off on using the brainstorm because I feel like I feel like Mac is setting up Underworld Breach here. I think if he plays... Oh, Iteration. Um, how much do I care about that? I guess I don't. I have to watch out that I don't get, like, mini brain freezed out again. But Malcolm Alluring Scoundrel. Oh, okay. Great. That's the play. Because that I can dismember. I think I'm just going to pay a million life. That's fine. Yes... Uh, put on top, put on top, and then play Under Mountain Adventure here. Guess I didn't leave Underground Sea up. Oh no, I guess I couldn't because of uh, I had to play Night's Whisper, get a Swamp, Attack Deck, Faden, and now I have Memory Lapse plus Force and Negation up, and if I get a turn to untap, I'll have Snapcaster up as well. So I'm going to try my best to not, not get dacked out here <laughs> to... I hope he doesn't have Breach plus too much else. I did put myself to four, which is a little bit vulnerable, because now maybe a burn spell will get me, but he's already used the Burst Lightning, which is a pretty big part of that. So I'm hoping... Okay. Underworld Breach. So I'm going to Memory Lapse the Underworld Breach. 
put it on top. That I ought to buy myself a turn, at the very least. Uh, what's your last card? Is it a cantrip? No. Definitely going to the forge here. Uh, I'll put it on Undermount Adventure because I actually need to attack Dak. What I need to find is Time Walk. Uh, put on top. <clears throat> Do I want Leovold? Let's see. If I take Leovold and I play Leovold off of these, these three lands, I'll have Snapcaster, Counterspell. I'll have the Snapcaster and Counterspell up. Is it 18? Techie were 6 down to 12. Yeah, so put on top. So what I think I do here is I think I ignore the deck. Yeah. And then cast Leovold and pass the turn with Counterspell up. <clears throat> counterspell plus Counterspell up. Um, so he, can da he can't dack himself. He can dack to try to steal Baleful Strix, but then I attack for lethal next turn. He has two cards in hand, and I have two counter spells. So th this time it should be enough. <laughs> I got myself into trouble against Mac before, but no, this time this time we should get there. I have 18 cards left. So I'm probably going to just force of negation the breach. Oh, what is he casting in response? Oh, Brain Freeze... I will decline on Leovold's ability. Okay. Mill for six. Mill. He's no cards in hand. All right. Uh, there's nothing. Yeah, I think Snapcaster Memory Lapse should just do it. Don't even think I need the the force of negation here. Okay. Close one. Close one, but but we got there. Dak Faden doesn't do anything. Max at 12. Trap puts him to 7. Well, well more than lethal. And <clears throat> still had a force negation back up here. So uh, we managed to not, not get completely clowned despite losing... A game two, which was kind of hard to lose. I guess drawing the extra card off Leovold really, really punished us. But we escaped with the match win. So who's got the chips? Oh, that would be me. All right. One and oh. Let's get to the next round. All righty. Battling against Timrod here. And yeah, we'll keep this here. Huh. What land do I get? I'm going to wait on the Verdant here because... If I get green, I can't get black. I don't have a black green land, unfortunately. And I'll turn on Asper Sentinel. That's annoying. I guess I could play Sheldock into something. I think I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and Shielder's Edict the Asper Sentinel here. I just don't really think I have a much better choice. It's going to... Playing a turn behind on is just going to kill me here, so... Okay, well, if I get counterspelled here, it'll be pretty annoying, but what can you do? Uh, I'm just going to get Swamp instead of Badlands. I don't really think it really helps me to to get Badlands. <laughs> and uh, I think just getting a Swamp and then Wooded Foothills can get black that way. Oh, my God. Mana Tithe. Unbelievable. All right. Forest. Green Source. If I get a Green Source here and can play Leovold, I'll be pretty happy. Oh, no, Snuff Out's pretty good, though. All right. That's Sheldock. Yeah, we'll take the risk. We'll Sheldock the Time Walk. It's just too good to, to get to to get to do that. Um, yeah, I'll just pass. I, I don't think I need to... Here, let's just... Uh, I just... I don't... Really, here's the problem. If I Snuff Out and pay the one, then... I can't remand. And Tim might play something I really want to remand here. I, I, I wouldn't know, you know. I'll take one. I don't care about that. And I'll try to kill the Esper Sentinel again, end of turn. And then if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. 
but it feels like leaving mana up is better. All right, cast by Fang, paying four life. I'll pay one to prevent it. All right, we finally got the Esper Sentinel off the board. And then now I'm going to Knight's Whisper here and then leave up Remand if I draw an untapped land, which I did. Oh, and it's a... Unfortunately, these two lands aren't untapped, but this is a green land. So now I get to crack Wooded Foothills for Forest, which means I get a Leovold next turn and it can start Urwing. <clears throat> also, despite Esper Sentinel and the Mana Tithe being very strong, Tim hasn't really followed up. And notice, by the way, Tim is drafting black-white mid-range for the 17th time in a row. <laughs> He's a regular Sandy Dog over here. It's funny, Tim Tim says, you all say I just draft black-white. Well, it's like, yeah, that's because you do, which is fine. That's a fine deck to draft. I think black-white's pretty good, and, and Tim knows how to draft it and usually does well with it, but it is funny. Collective Brutality, oh, this is a different, a sort of different deal. All right, well, I'm going to remand that. I'll just get Forest, I think. I've got enough blue sources. Because I don't have any spells in my hand. Let's hope that uh, Tim goes for their animate here instead of Collective Brutality again. Well, the good thing is he can't Collective Brutality and animate this turn, which means I'll have at least a turn where I get to play Ur a Leovold, which will stop the Gristlebrand from going off. Collective Brutality. Yeah, unfortunately, I drew a spell off of it, but... That's all right. Okay. Um, I didn't draw the lands that would allow me to play Uro at the same time as Leovold, so let's just go Leovold to make it so Gristlebrand's a lot weaker. And then we're very close to setting up a bunch of turns with Time Walk. Okay, I'm not attacking with the Leovold, I can tell you that much. Odawar is not bad. Let's... Do this because if I hit a fetch, oh, I already used both my fetches. I was gonna say I could, uh, I could shell dock, but unfortunately not. So let's just play Jace. Let's pass the turn. I'm gonna keep Odawara in hand here because if Gristlebrand gets reanimated, then I think I might need a little help. All right, well, this is gonna be an insane. I would say turn, but it's really going to be a bunch of turns. I don't think Tim, if Tim doesn't do anything pretty good here, I'm just going to take all the rest of the turns this game. Because Sheldock is about to be live. Time walk, then time walk off Jace. Fatal push the Jace. Uh, all right. That's fair. Oh, dig through time actually looking kind of nice here, though I guess Uro time walk is really what I want to go for. Let's see. Let's go Uro, blue, blue. Blue, green, green, blue, exiling, wooded foothills, verdant, snuff out, night's whisper, uh, chase. I'm just trying to leave the best snapcaster targets I can in there. Okay, Uro. I'd like to pay two life, yes. And then I'm going to cast time walk. And at this point, do I play Udawara? I don't think so. I have infinite land plays off Uro. I'm still not attacking with Leovold. I feel like even with Dismember in hand, it feels like it's not necessary. Now, now I'll make an attack. Because now I've got Udawara and Dismember up. And I'm attacking with Uro as well. Let's not put a land into play. Would that do anything? No, I don't think it would. So let's just not put the land into play. No, Tim's just dead. Okay, well... We'll just do this, Tamio, minus three, return time walk, and easy game one. All right, sideboarding. This deck doesn't have much of a sideboard, to be honest. I could put in Rexage because it kills Esper Sentinel. Let's see what else Tim had. Um, Preacher of the Schism, reanimate. No, this is actually not really looking like... Like, Esper Sentinel, I think, is the only... The only thing. So, yeah, let's just battle as is. All right, on to game two on the draw here. Let's see if uh, Time Walk can be undefeated this time. <laughs> it, my last Time Walk deck I definitely took some ambitious lines against Sandy, including keeping a No-Lander, which I will not hear, though this deck is really a thing of beauty. All these spells are so cheap and so good. I love it. I just wish I could, you know, exchange one for a land. 
Uh, yeah, I'll keep this. And I think I just put Undermount Adventure on the bottom here. I'm also playing against like a white-black mid-range deck where fighting over the initiative is not necessarily going to be the best for me anyway. So, all right. Draw. Oh, I was going to play Island to leave up Brainstorm, but I'm certainly happier just playing a tap land on turn one. Do I play Jace or Baleful Strix on turn two is kind of the question. I was just getting Indotha Triumph. Let's just play Jace here. And I'm not thinking of holding up Memory Lapse mana this early in the game. I've got to play my spells. I don't have a removal spell right now. So like a Preacher of the Schism, for example, would be kind of annoying. But I don't think overall getting a Jace out and then Baleful Strix is a pretty decent little blocker. It's a chance he's just killing Jace anyway. Oh, this looks like Collective Brutality, Discard Deluge. Sure, you can take one of my card draw spells or my counter spell. I don't really care which one. But he also discarded Deluge. He didn't discard like a Gristlebrand, which is pretty good because it means he's not getting full value out of his card. It really is Memory Lapse or Night's Whisper. I don't think it makes too much sense to take Brainstorm here because I don't have a way to shuffle right now, so it's not that powerful. Well, wow, he took the Brainstorm. Interesting. I would not have guessed that. Mm. I, well, I drew, I drew Wooded Foothills, so maybe that was a good call. Uh, I will play the Foothills now because my Brainstorm's in my graveyard. And I guess I'll get Breeding Pool off that. Hopefully this thing isn't too good. Gaunty Lord of Luxury. Uh, I should actually wait to crack the fetch after because he's not taking the card I'm going to get. And this way I get to see what he hit. Hopefully not Time Walk. But... Also, Memory Lapse is pretty good against Gaunti. You can lapse the card back to your to your hand or to your deck. All right, Breeding Pool's what I want. What did I, what did he get? He didn't get Time Walk. He didn't get Tamio. Didn't get Leovold. Remand. I have Mana Drain Lapse. No, not Force of Negation. Shield Edict, Snapcaster, Snuff Out, Sylvan, Under Mountain, Uro, Tamio, Udawara, Ponder, Preordain. Um, what did he get? Is there something that I'm missing here? Oh, is it Dark Confidant? No, it's not Dark Confidant either. Uh, oh, is it Dig Through Time? No, it's not that. Not Snuff Out. I'll take one more look, but I don't want to spend all day on this. Um, hmm. Dismember, maybe? No, I don't know. Whatever it is, it's not one of my best cards, so... Um... And let's play Baleful Strix here. Oh, no, never mind. Island. I'm going to play Dark Confidant. And now I'll leave up Counter Magic. He knows about Memory Lapse. He doesn't know about Mana Drain. I'm at 17. I'll take a hit off Gaunti and, and a Bob. Lockthwain Scorn. Um, I will Mana Drain that. Seems like it's worth it. Hopefully I don't get uh, mana tithes here. That would be kind of annoying. Okay. In comes Gaunti. I mean, presumably when you're playing against a Bob, you gotta you gotta race damage if you can. I don't have anything to use the mana drain mana on yet, but I'm sure I can find something here. A little Tamio action. Maybe a time walk. Uro would be a fantastic draw here. So he's got two cards in hand, plus the card I have exiled face down, and I really don't know what it is. I guess we'll find out soon enough. Could it have been some kind of cantrip? I don't know. I'm like very confused, but I guess we'll figure it out. Reanimate the Jace. Um, okay, that's not that strong of a play. I really hope Timrod doesn't try to flip that Jace, because those were great. All right. Here comes Bob, flipping my dig. No, flipping Shielder's Edict. I don't really want to use that. I have Mana Drain Mana up. Let's go Baleful Strix. Not using any Mana Drain Mana, of course. <laughs> uh, Badlands. I'm just going to play Botanical Sanctum and pass. Oh, I guess this doesn't leave up Shieldred's Edict. Yeah, that's fine. I'm really not going to play Shieldred's Edict when they have a Jason play. That 
as far as I can tell, doesn't do a whole lot. I mean, I guess it gives Tim a, a discard outlet if he's really looking for that, but as long as we're just sitting here, I, I'm pretty happy. He might, did he have four lands off Gonti? Feels like he might have. I don't know. No damage. And, oh, there is the skipper. All right, let's play Undermount Adventure. This time I'm going to leave up uh, Memory Lapse plus Shield's Redict, of course. Play this thing. Go and get, I don't know, Forest. Is this like a Reprieve or something? Oh, Vamp Tutor. Oh, that's what he that's what he got. So I could Memory Lapse Vamp Tutor to the top of my deck, but I don't, I don't think I want to do that. I'd rather just memory lapse whatever he's getting. Okay, Underman Adventure. And I don't really need another swamp. Yeah, I'll just get the forest. Well, I don't really need oh, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Mm. Let's leave Baleful Strix back. We have, we have the initiative right now, so there's really no point in getting too too risky. Okay, so hasn't used Jace, so now he's going to Jace. This is just not going to work out very well, because I'm going to get the Jace. I mean, he's going to get to animate a Troxa, or at least try to. I'm going to memory lapse it, and has he been setting up Manatide this whole time? Because getting memory lapsed, and then, let's see. Let's flip with Bob first. We flip Tamio. Uh, that's pretty much game. Uh, let's go Forge. Put two counters on the Baleful Strix. We'll draw... Oh, Shield... <laughs> All right, yeah, we got... Let's kill, kill the Gaunti. Attack. We haven't even used Jace. We haven't used Force... We have Force Negation. We're going to be able to Tamio back Memory Lapse. Oh, it's just... It's just the value just does not end. 2-0 and oh, pretty easily. Let's get to round three. All right, we're going to do a little red zone. Since we don't get to play Helm this draft, we, you know, we, we do random pairings, and I'm going to play Updraft Elemental round three, but I wanted to see what Helm got up to. Cheon is on Jund with Rampaging Raptor, Birds, Skull Clamp. He's really Nissa and Troll Aesthetic here, is what it looks like, because he's got a Nissa on seven with a 7-7 seven, seven and a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, that doesn't look great for the home team. Uh, let's see. If Reckoner Bankbuster, oh, Balance can deliver the goods. No cards in hand. It's going to kill the two tokens. Let's see, seven lands. Troll Sedic's going to lose two lands. Paul's going to lose his whole hand. But on the other hand, he's still got this Nissa going, which can either blow up Bankbuster or make an 8-8. Eight -eight. Let's see what Paul had lurking in the depths here. Losing all your creatures, losing all your cards. Black Lotus, Mosswood, Dread Knight, Chandra, Delighted Halfling. And he activates Bank Buster and... Oh, he even plays a Giver of Runes. All right. So, Paul, I mean, we, we turned it in at a good time. This is uh, Chion on no cards in hand except the card he just drew. It looks like, oh, Luris is still in the Companion Zone. That is that is good news. That is good news. So now with Nissa, you can make an 8-8 or you can kill the Bank Buster. And it's pretty close as to which one you'd want to do. Because Troll's deck is really good. I mean, it's a Luris deck. It's really good at using the lands. Oh, dashed Raghavan. Oh, uh, so you're going to dash it and attack. You're willing to trade with Giver of Runes, which I think is clearly going to happen. And, wow, we were very close to just winning with minus seven. I guess he could get a plus three, plus three, so he could do six damage. Yeah. Okay, Paul's no cards in hand. Do you blow up the bank buster, or do you make a token? It's a big decision. I think, I think I would just blow up the bank buster. The problem is if the bank buster makes a token, it chumps the, 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 the monster, the horror token, so I, I kind of lean towards doing that, but, well, this is actually, no, the, no, Paul's right, this is lethal, because you can minus seven to give it plus three, plus three, so that's 12 points of damage, so Matt has to draw something pretty good to get out of this. I mean, any removal spell works, and he's got a ton of those. He's already used Path and Balance, hasn't used Swords to Plowshares yet. Yeah, no, going for lethal, I think, is probably good, especially since you're playing against Luris, which is going to win the long game anyway. Luminarch Aspirant, 
per scroll. Oh, that is lethal. Yeah, all Paul needs to do is minus seven, then this attack for 12, and this is three points. That saves three, that is nine, and that would be that. So, oh, we, we even drew, oh, a scrapwork mutt. We had a scrapwork mutt too, discarding a mox. Look at you, Mox and Lotus. And then Nissa goes in and boom, a dub for Paul there. I thought I'd never see the day. No, I'm really glad to have Paul battling in the cube streets, even if we didn't get to play him in this particular draft. All right, so Paul wins this game. Let's move on. All right, let's look at game two. Troll Aesthetic versus Humph. Matt, my teammate, is on the play with the black-white Luris deck, which is, tends to be pretty good against these like red-green decks. The Planeswalkers are, are problematic. Minsk and Boo and uh, Nyssa, those kinds of things, can be pretty annoying. But cards like Questing Beasts, which are good cards, don't usually fare quite as well against the white-black, a bunch of removal spells into Luris replay value cards. Especially like Luris Selfless Spirit is a nice little combo where you play Selfless Spirit, you play Luris, the Selfless Spirit protects the Luris, and if you ever have to use the Spirit, you could just recast it off Luris. So it's kind of like this like traveling little shield of protection for Luris. Which has actually made me want to add, uh, in the next cube update, Benevolent Bodyguard. I think that one's actually good enough. White for a 1-1, one, one, and you can sack it to give one of your creatures protection from any color. It's a one-shot Giver of Runes, Mother of Runes sort of deal, which obviously that's worse than those cards, but I still feel like it's pretty good. Protects against removal, doesn't cost any mana, can also make things unblockable. Oh, turn two Sentinel of the Nameless City got reprieved. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, turn two Sentinel's good, and the reprieve makes sense why Matt didn't have a play last turn. His deck is, you know, all cards that cost less than three, basically. Obviously, there's some spells that are a little more. Oh, love Curse Scroll. That's been, a, that's been a pretty sweet addition. So is Scholar of New Horizons. Two mana, one, one. Enters with a plus and plus one counter, and you can tap it and remove a counter from any permanent you control to get a planes and put it into play if they have more lands in your hand otherwise. But it's also a planes card, not just planes. So you can uh, pick up dual lands off that. All right, Wall of Roots, make a counter, Outland Liberator, tap land. Oh, okay, nice little efficient turn. Matt could take the one out of five to, to try to curse scroll here. I just like Curse Scroll in a low curve black white deck. You, you empty your hand and you just have a repeatable damage source. I think Curse Scroll is pretty reasonable, honestly. Trinket Mage for that thing. Let's see what Troll Aesthetic has to play here. All right. Using Scholar of New Horizons. Getting a Plains. Playing a Plains. Firing off a Lion Sash. Yeah. And then are we going to, you can't kill the Outland Liberator because Wall of Roots adds a mana. So this thing can kill the Lion Sash or the Curse Scroll as it so desires. And it's going to reconfigure it onto that. Sure. I guess Paul just has to decide, am I going to use the Outland Liberator end of turn? Because now's a good time because the Wall of Root mana. Or are you just going to wait on using the Outland Liberator entirely? And it looks like Paul would rather just attack with it. The thing is, you get to Wall of Roots on the next turn if you need to. Like, you can spend mana on... Like, Paul can spend mana on his turn, and then on Troll Aesthetic's next turn, kill the Lion Sash, or the Curse Scroll, depending on which one he thinks is more of a threat. Probably the Lion Sash. And the fact that the Lion Sash maybe gets to exile the Outland Liberator out of the graveyard seems not super relevant. So, we know there's a Sentinel at the very least that Paul could play, but we'll, we'll see what else. Presumably he's got something big to play this turn. All right, we got a Bayou. So we've got something coming. Ooh. This looks like a Green Sun Zenith? Or perhaps a Nissa. Oh, it's going to be a Nissa. He's got to pay two life there. Yep. All right, so we're going to play a Nissa with five loyalty. And then... One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. So then he can't use the Liberator this turn, but he can make a 6-6, six, six, attack for two, and then still have Liberator mana up. Lion Sash isn't a big threat. Curse Scroll, still not a big threat. So Matt's going to need a way to kill that Nyssa, because Planeswalkers are, are extremely problematic for 
uh, this black white deck. You can kill all the creatures, but when this makes a creature every turn, like a 6-6 six, six or a 7-7 seven, seven every turn, obviously you're going to lose the game where you're killing those creatures one by one. Okay, Lotus Petal is a start. Maybe we're casting Balance to, to begin with. Yeah, so now Paul's definitely going to use the Outland Liberator. So Troll's going to lose a land. Paul's going to lose a creature. Yeah, that's not that bad, honestly. Paul's going to lose Wall of Roots, Outland Liberator. <laughs> it is cute to, to throw Lion Sash onto a creature in order to not be countered for balance. Um, you could... Depending on a troll's hand, he could have, like, curse scrolled his own Scholar to, to try to get balance down to zero cards, but obviously I would hope he could do something a little better than that. So you lose land, you lose two cards in hand, and I would assume a Wall of Roots is probably Paul's weakest creature. I think the 6-6, six, six, I would imagine, is better. Um, but what could Troll Siddick play afterwards to make this be reasonable? I don't even know. Discarded Raghavan and Goldspan Dragon. Well, that makes sense. Raghavan doesn't look like it's getting in, and you don't have double red for Goldspan, but that's still kind of scary if those are the two cards left. Okay, Wall of Roots does indeed go down. And I would kind of assume Matt has, like, another thing here, but... Because he didn't, he didn't empty it for balance. Him to Turok, sacking Lotus Petal, getting Sentinel, and Questing Beast. Okay, so... Uh, it's one card to one card, except Paul's got Nyssa, and that Planeswalker is just running rampant here. Take six, make a seven seven. If Paul drew red, oh, he drew tapped red. So now, but now next turn, Raging Ravine's coming in too. Yeah, this looks like it's not gonna work out for Mr. Troll Ascetic. Not for the win this time, unfortunately, because he was on my team, but. I'm 2-0, so we've got a good start to us. All right, there's land number five. Into damn, kill all creatures. Yeah, and it's just like balance, wrath, you know, whatever removal spells Troll might draw, kill all your creatures, and then Nissa just keeps sitting there pumping out 8-8s and 7-7s seven and 6-6s. Six and yeah, Paul is completely dominating base just off Nissa, And then Raging Ravine's even getting in for, for five. So, or four rather, but next turn is just lethal because next turn we have the same, or Chion has the same play of like, make this a five, five, make this is an eight, eight, and then give them both plus two, plus two and trample. So 17 points of trample coming in. That seems like a loss for Troll Ascetic here. You can pull something magic out of his hat, but getting Loris into your hand won't do anything. Killing, killing one creature buys you a little time, but... I guess you can uh, you can curse scroll the Nissa down to six, so it can't so it can't use the ultimate, and then maybe play a creature or play a removal spell, or maybe you drew an instant speed removal spell, and you're hoping Paul goes for the Nissa ultimate. Though he doesn't really have a big reason to do that. If he, what's more interesting is if he drew a play. Do attack with Ravine or cast the card that you drew for the turn. That That is a little less clear to me. And Paul didn't play a card last turn either. He, he played Black Cleave the turn before. So he could have now red cards in hand. I mean, he's got red, green, and black mana. Like, he's got all the mana he needs. Solid, solid red, green deck here for sure. And looks like we're activating Raging Ravine. Troll Sedek is going to let it happen. Not using the ultimate, which I am not, does not surprise me in the slightest. And Troll now needs a removal spell to not die to Phyrexian, the Phyrexian Horror. And even if he has one, this game is not really winnable. I guess you could Cursed Scroll the Nyssa down to six loyalty before casting your removal spell. Yeah, so he's got like Swords to Plowshares or Path. So scroll... Oh, it's unexpectedly absent, and he scrolled Humph. Oh, okay. So you go to three here. Paul is at four from that ancient tomb. 
But then there's another 9-9 coming your way. This this seems like, I guess if you drew another removal spell, you would still lose. So, all right. Well, Paul got that match. So I'm going to get into round three here and see if I can make up for that loss. All right. Time for round three. Um, this is kind of a mid-hand. Let me check what's in their deck. Oh, so it's the mirror. It's like the Sultai mid-mirror. Yeah, I will keep this hand because Snuff Out's really good in that, in that case. And so is Sheldock. So I think this is worth keeping. The Snapcaster Snuff Out is not great because you have to spend the mana. So it's a play you can make on six mana, but it's not a play that works for two mana. Snapcaster doesn't play like that. Um, it is unfortunate I don't have green mana, but as soon as I draw green, then I can Uro as well, which looks pretty good. All right, let's Sheldock. Brainstorm, Force of Negation, Library, Ponder. Yeah, kind of a miss on that. Also, all of those cards would have been good to draw. It's pretty unlucky, though, because if I look at four cards at random from my deck, they'd all be good to draw, just about, because my deck has all great cards in it. Mm, I'm not loving this. Let's see what we draw here. Action. Not a blue or black land, please. Oh, Verdant's actually kind of nice. So let's go Swamps, snuff out the Cobra. And then next turn, I'm going to Verdant for, I guess, just Forest to cast Uro. Oh, they had a Grist on turn two anyway. Okay, well, Grist is fine. Shieldred's Edict would take care of it kind of nicely. Oh, Night's Whisper is also a nice one. So, But let's, let's Uro here. Uh, let's just get forest. I don't think I need to get breeding pool because I have this underground sea in hand. Oh, I'll play the dark slick shores because that that one doesn't come back or good, that one comes into play on uh, tapped. So next turn, I'm gonna knight's whisper and hope that updraft doesn't play anything too huge this turn. Tap 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 tap. Mm. Uh, all right, I don't like it. Let's take some damage. Need to need to get something going here. Hmm. Time walk would be nice. <laughs> what else would I be looking for? Oh, Catcher of Triumph is not actually that bad. Let's go Knight's Whisper here so I can cast Leobold still if I draw it. That's not ideal. Let's play Catcher of Triumph then past the turn and now we're basically dead missing that badly off knight's whisper is going to make it pretty hard to win this because i'm going to get hit for six down to five here then i'm going to uro man do i have to snapcaster i guess i actually do just to get enough cards in my graveyard snapcaster the stuff out Block the 1-1. One, one. <laughs> Take 5 down to 6. And then I go to 5 off Cracking Foothills. But then I can bring back Uro, go to 8. And they can kill Uro. But let's see. Um, still not lethal. All right, all right. Uh, do I want to Brainstorm first? I kind of do. Because if I draw Time Walk or something, it becomes very different. That becomes a winnable game. Ugh. Let's put these lands back, I guess. Oh, no, I played the wrong land. Because I didn't need to brain... Now that I brainstormed, I actually didn't need to fetch anymore. Oh, because now I can't get the bad lands. Actually, I have to get Breeding Pool. All right, well, I was pretty much dead either way, but this definitely did not help. Because <laughs> now I'm basically hoping to draw exactly Time Walk off of this. If I do, I probably win, though. Let's see. Oh, Shieldred's Edict. Put a land on the battlefield, underground sea. Your opponent sacrifices a planeswalker. Mm -hmm. And then pass. Oh, is that even right? Should I have waited till they sack Sakura Tribe Elder to kill the Ovenwald Oddity? That would have been better. For sure. Because, yeah, I mean, it's pretty bad either way, but I'd rather not lose right on the spot. Like, basically, I should have Children's Edict the Ovenwald Oddity 
And then Grist would still kill Uro. I am dead here, though, because of this, the fetch land. Yeah, that was not, not, not my finest <laughs> work that turn. But hold on, what would I have drawn? Sylvan and Preordain, seen Tamio and Dismember, put them both in the bottom and drawn. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd probably still lose then, but definitely could have played that one a little bit better. Uh, do I want Rex Sage? It kills Mox, but that doesn't seem quite good enough. I think, I think we're good the way we are. All right, time for game two. Mulligan that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to keep this hand. Bob is really good in this matchup. I guess I just put Swamp back. I don't think I want to put Tamio back. It's either Tamio or Swamp. I think with a Bob in play, I feel pretty good about finding land. So I think doing that makes sense. And then turn two, Bob. Hopefully they don't open on Mox again. Okay, turn one elf. Well, I'm still going to play the Bob here. Snuff out would be a great draw. But I'll play Bob and hope their turn two isn't too good because I have turn three Shieldra's Edict. It just feels kind of bad. Oh, they're attacking with Elf? Wonderful. That means the Elf basically didn't do anything for them this turn, which means if they don't have a play this turn, if they don't have like another Mana Dork, oh, I get to Shieldra's Edict, the Elf, and then that, that goes a long way. Oh, Vamp is kind of nice. Let's go each opponent sacks a non-token creature. Get the Elf out. Play this. I'll stop on upkeep because... Now I might vamp for time walk. Kind of felt like I didn't need to there. And I can flip. Oh, Bob is just running rampant this game. I can flip off Bob first to see what I draw. Brainstorm. Oh, interesting. Um, I could vamp. I could brainstorm and then vamp. I kind of like that. Because I get a, I get a nice shuffle. Oh, I drew the time walk anyway. Let's put back. Badlands. Actually, let's put back. Which land do I want? I'm not vamping this turn, I don't think. I don't really actually have anything to vamp into because I don't think I even want Snapcaster. I think I want to cast Ponder this turn, so I'm going to keep Odawara. So I guess I'll put back Badlands, Odawara, because then I just draw Odawara. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wait on the I guess I'll play the Odawara first and cast Time Walk. And then cast Ponder here. Badlands, Botanical Sanctum, Knight's Whisper. So I could just shuffle. Let's just shuffle. Oh I hit Jace. Uh, Alright, so now what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reveal with Bob. See what we hit. <laughs> and my intent is to vamp for mana drain here, but if Bob reveals a two mana counter, then I don't need to. No, it reveals Uro. All right. Let's just get mana drain. Draw. Play Jace Rin's Prodigy. And then hit for two with drain up. And next turn, I get to go Tamio Time Walk. Jace time walk, I just get to time walk a million times. Such a good Dark Confidant deck. This this is like peak Dark Confidant. <laughs> so uh, I think that uh, we're going to be going to game three here and have a pretty good chance of going 3-0. and The biggest weakness of this deck is I don't have any fast Excel, but Force of Negation can help with that. Whoa, I was going to Mana Drain, but they attacked with Creeping Tar Pit? Okay. I mean, I guess if I reveal a dig through time here, that's like a little bit awkward. What did we hit? Famous last words. <laughs> um, I'm just not that worried with Uro and Tamio and whatnot here. I'm at 12. And I revealed a lie, reveal Alexandria. All right, so let's go loot with Jace. Discard library, verdant, just get underground C, Tamio, minus three, get back time walk, time walk, plus with Jace, hit for two with Bob. And now, unless I reveal exactly dig through time, I pretty much just win. 
catch me a triumph, nice. Um, now what are we doing? I could Jace time walk, and I could plus Tamio. Let's plus Tamio name Memory Lapse. I think that's probably good. I milled Snapcaster Remand, sure. Cast Uro. Make. I just want to make sure I don't die to. To. To anything here, and then. Let's. Minus, actually, let's minus three on vamp. And then vamp down to nine. And then I, now I also know I won't die to Bob because I'm revealing this card, which I think is just going to be memory lapse. Yeah, okay. They, they, were, they were done. All right, game three. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the draw. The cards I need to draw are force negation, dismember, snuff out. These can get me through... To where I can have two mana up, at which point mana drain, memory lapse, and remand start working, and then past that, or in Shieldred's Edict, and then past that, my good cards will kind of take over. But I just got to get to that kind of turn two here. We'll see if we get some action that does that. I've got two cheap or free removal spells. Oh, there we go. This has <laughs> this kind of has everything I want because it has a dismember for their first mana dork and a force for their first play. Oh, they don't even have a turn one mana dork. And I drew Shell Dock, or Mana Drain, rather. Let's put... Um, I think I'm going to put Shieldred's Edict under the Shell Dock. I feel like this deck's pretty gassy, so by the time I get to 20 cards, I'd rather have an Edict than a Night's Whisper, but I don't know. That's kind of close. The only thing that's annoying about Shell Dock is I can't dismember turn their play this turn and leave up Drain. Oh, well, I can just force a negation of this. I'm not definitely not getting channeled. Um, I think given my hand, I'm just going to exile Tamiya. I guess I'm glad I, ha I drew force of negation. And we're going to see. And now we're just in the forest waiting room. The reason I kept Uro is Uro is pretty gassy. Tamiya by itself is not a ton of gas. Let's see what this is. Oko, Thief of Crowns. No, I'm going to mana drain that. My deck's pretty annoying to play against. <laughs> All right, let's get some action here. Forest? Forest would be good. I don't have any big card draw spells. That's like probably the biggest weakness of this deck. But if I draw a forest here, all is forgiven. Because then I get to slam Leobold. I really didn't draft the best mana drain deck. I will say that. My deck doesn't use the mana drain mana all that effectively. But they probably have an Eldrazi in hand. For that channel. Oh, brainstorm. Um, yeah, let's brainstorm. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to have to let them resolve a card because I need to play Ketria Trium here. So let's put back. I guess I want to play Leovold. So put back Uro Leovold. Well, it's not cycle Ketria Trium. Hold on. <laughs> play Ketria Trium. And unfortunately, I don't have the mana to. I can't use the managing mana to remand here. So they get one turn, but hopefully whatever they resolve is not a non-creature, or it's not something I can't dismember. Oh, is this a Green Suns? Yeah, I can dismember that. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely dismembering Rafellos. Okay. Oh, did I, should I have put Uro? Maybe I should have done Uro to, hit, to have remand up too. Kind of just like slamming Leovold, but I don't know. That, that I guess that's a little closer. We're at 27 and 28. We're, we haven't done a good job of drawing cards here. I will say that. Did they draw the Green Sons again? Oh, Finale. No, they're putting Rafelos into play. Okay. No, they're going to have a lot of mana because I know my next card is not, not particularly great. All right. Let's draw. Play a land. All right, well, Snapcaster Mage is nice, so now hopefully I can remand this next play, and then I either go Snapcaster Mana Drain, or I don't know what. I hope this is an expensive play that gets remanded nicely. Feywild Caretaker, yeah, I'm going to remand it. Okay, and... Hex Drinker, oh man, that's actually kind of a lot of stuff. And an Elf? 
I need some action. I need some action here. Good. Uh, I think I'm going to attack with Leo here. I'll trade for those two. And then I guess I can Baleful Strix and still Snapcaster Mana Drain. So I'm going to pass. I'm not going to kill the Rafelos because it's a risk, but the, if I if I go snap dismember Rufellos or snap dismember Hexdrinker, they play the Feywild Caretaker, and I think that that's worse for me because oh, man, they still have so much mana. All right, well I'm gonna snap drain this. The sick part is their last. Now I wish I kept <laughs> Night's Whisper a little bit. Uh, their last card. I think it's an Eldrazi because of that channel. So they have currently five, six, nine mana. So they're just gonna level up Hex Drinker here, but they can't attack with it because the Baleful Strix. So they're gonna, yeah, they have a lot that they can do next turn. All right, a removal spell would be really nice here. A time walk would be amazing. All right, let's cast Preordain. Hmm. Badlands and Undermountain Adventure. How good is Undermountain Adventure here? I get to also cast Shield Drazedict. Oh, it also gets me a Forest for Uro. All right, that is good enough. So let's go, I have 20 cards. Make them sack Lenor Elves. But if I'm gonna do it, I should just do it now. Um, I mean, I guess I had the other green with uh, Botanical Sanctum anyway, but that's fine. I'll do this, pass, and I think I do attack with Baleful Strix. I don't think they're attacking without giving their Hex Drinker protection from everything. All right. <sighs> I'm dead to a lot of things here, it feels like, forest included. They can't activate Tar Pit yet. Yep, now they're going to get to play Uro. Or not Uro, an Eldrazi. Well, if I find Time Walk, I could still win. Oh, they have 10 mana? Ur Ulamog's 11, so killing the Elf was actually pretty good. Because I think they might just be leveling up Hex Drinker here instead. We've already used Snapcaster, we've already used Titania, we haven't used Jace yet. I'm just looking at ways I can get Shield Redetic back to kill this Hex Drinker. But on the other hand, if you hit me for six here, I go to 13. I really need to draw a way to kill Rafelos this turn or draw Time Walk. That would also work. Uh, yeah, I can't block it. You, you get the initiative. You get to go to get another forest. Or you could get a Swamp to animate Tar Pit, but you already played a land. Oh, that actually could end up costing them quite a bit. All right. Let's draw action. Oh, Odawara. Yeah, Odawara is awesome. All right, let's play Uro first. Green, green, blue, blue. Uh, do I want to play Uro first? Hold on. I think I'm going to Odawara and then play Uro post combat. Yeah, I think that's probably good. So let's go Odawara. Bounce Rofellos. Don't need to animate any creatures. I don't. There's no reason to leave blockers back. So I'm attacking for nine here. Oh, and then I clearly go into the forge. Put two counters on Baleful Strix, and then cast Earl using the Undermountain Adventurer. I guess a lot of Snapcaster <laughs> cards. All right, Uro. It'd be so funny if I hit Time Walk here. <laughs> no, Sylvan Library, which I guess I will play just, just in case. All right, I mean, they look pretty dead to me now. They probably got an Eldrazi in hand. I don't think it matters, but I do think we did a good job playing around it. And uh, Hex Drinker versus the world. I don't think uh, Hex Drinker is going to win. Boom, and that is a 3-0.
All right. Well, we emerged victorious in in part thanks to my 3-0. Uh, I went 3-0. Falcon I went 2-1. Talisker went 2-1. And then Troll Cynic actually won his last round after we'd already won. So that was an 8-4 victory. Pretty nice. And uh, this deck ended up just perfect. I mean, this is just... So first of all, it's got Time Walk plus Tamiyo plus Snapcaster plus Jace. So it's Time Walk with three ways to rebuy Time Walk. That was already great. Then it has Memory Lapse, Remand, Mana Drain, Force of Negation. So four cheap or free counters. Brainstorm, Ponder, Preordain, and Night's Whisper. So a bunch of cheap cantrips as well as Baleful Strix and Sylvan. So very consistent. Jace also kind of helps here. And then it had Snuff Out, Dismember, and Shieldred's Edict as cheap removal with the green basically offering finishers. Leovold, Uro, and Undermount Adventure, ways to actually close out the game. And then the Dig Through Time I never cast, but I think was good in the deck. Plus I had Shell Duck, and I had two fetches, and a bunch of duels, Underground Sea, Triumph. Like, this deck was just a beautiful deck. Didn't get a chance to see the whole Doomsday thing, but, uh, you know, it was still... Do, if Oracle had wheeled, I probably would have tried it. But we 3 0 we won the draft, and uh, yeah, it was good times all around. Alrighty, that'll do it for today. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you hanging out as I pass Chi on Black Lotus. He went 2-1, by the way. Paul Paul actually held his weight, but uh, unfortunately his team didn't, didn't care to follow up. In any case, that'll do it for today. I'll be back tomorrow with another draft, and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.